Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today we're pinching the rear end of the civilizational alphabet as Hart playing as the Slavs in red gets ready to take on Hera playing as the Turks in blue. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with the goats and scouts and try to get their butts up to feudal age ASAP. Why don't we take a look at the pendulous belly of the rhino and then at the civilizations we'll be watching today. Now, the Slavs are a civilization that wastes no time getting all up in your grill by relying on their super strong melee units to start with their infantry, whose tech tree is perfect and already incredibly strong, can be upgraded to do trample damage. And their unique unit is the Boyar, a fairly slow but super powerful tanky cavalry unit with a very high amount of both melee and pierce armor. Think Teutonic Knight on a horse. Now, to support their melee units on the field of battle against harassment by annoying ranged units, all Slavic Siege Workshop units are 15% cheaper, which is fantastic because the Slavs have access to all Siege Workshop units with the exception of Bombard Cannons, and those cheaper Siege units can be combined with Slavic Monks, which move 20% faster than normal to generate a powerful Siege Monk Rush, as I always like to say, adorably, adorably called a smush. Although, the adorable part is what I like to say, it was called a smush long before I entered the Age of Empire scene. Now, Slavic castles themselves can also be upgraded so that 40% of their stone cost is replaced with wood, which does save players 260 stone per castle. Although, remember, you still have to plop down a deposit of 650 stone on your first starter castle. To help grow their military productions, the Slavs get supplies and gambeson for free. Their farmers work 15% faster, so that food income keeps going up and up and up. And every single barracks, archery range, stable, and siege workshop does actually provide five population space, just like a house, which does free up more wood for those quicker farms, more castles, or maybe even army supply in the early stages of the game when things like spearmen and skirmishers come out to play now speaking of coming out to play we've got Hera playing as the Turks in blue a civilization that loves its gunpowder units Turkish gunpowder units are created faster come with extra HP cheaper technologies and some of their gunpowder units can be upgraded to get extra range now staying on brand the unique unit of the Turks is the Janissary this is a more expensive but overall less accurate hand cannoneer with more HP a better attack and more armor but Unfortunately, unlike the hand cannoneer, no big plus 10 attack bonus against the infantry, which we may 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 or may not see out of our slab. Now to support their heavy but expensive units on the field of battle, the Turks can field some pretty decent and interesting supporting units of their own. Their scout line units come with extra pierce armor. Their cav archers can be upgraded to get a massive 40% increase to their HP. And their scout line units can automatically, rather do automatically, become light cavalry and then automatically become hussars once the Turks reach castle and imperial, which does give Turks access to top of the line raiding units, light cavalry units, right the second they hit the next age in order to be able to afford their gunpowder units, which if you've played this game, watch this game, know this game, you know they're pretty darn gold intensive, pretty darn expensive. Well, Turkish gold miners do work 20% faster. They get the chemistry upgrade free of charge. And those upgrades I mentioned where the scout becomes a light cab and then matures into a hussar does save the Turks 1,300 resources. That's a 1,300 total resources of which half of that is a gold savings. And so the Turks, a pretty powerful saving civilization in that regard. Those are the two civilizations, both players sitting on 18 villagers, both players heading up to the next age. It looks like our Slav is literally the exact amount of time ahead of his Turkish opponent. Or rather, the opposite. I'm so sorry. The Turk is ahead of his opponent. Perhaps he skipped Loom. Let's check it out. Yes, he did. Harris skipping Loom so he can go up a little bit quicker than his opponent. 25 seconds, whereas these villagers have 40 HP and all of the uh, all of their steroid injections to give them all of the various armors and longevity on the battlefield. Let's take a look at that battlefield and where the players have spawned. Primary gold for our Turk. Nice. That is what you want to see. Nice and secure to the back. Now, this is the, ex <laughs> this is the exact opposite of what you want to see. Your primary stone exposed in the forward position and on top of a giant boil, it looks like here, annoyingly placed on a hill. He's got additional gold and stone in the wide, wide open expanses of Arabia. And then a little bit of extra gold here off to the side. Nice and safe from any raiding. Although I say that nice and safe. Art has, dis <laughs> has discovered it immediately. 
So Hera, at the end of the day, is also getting Loom now, which means that once Art hits Feudal, the villagers will actually be in the identical exact positions for both players. As Hera discovers this random scout inside his base, shoes him away as we watch that unfold. Let's take a look at where the forests are because Hera's entire southern reaches are completely naked. We've got forests to the back, a few small ones. So if there's ever an attack by the Protoss here from the outer space regions of Flat Earth, uh, our Turk will be nice and safe, but in terms of a full frontal from the Slav, I don't know so much about that. And a love tap, and down goes the Slavic scout. First blood being drawn by the Turk. Let's take a look at that Slav who just lost his scout as the game kind of freezes, kind of doesn't freeze. Instead of three small forests, he's got two. It looks like a few conjoined twins here uh, joined at the hip. This is a very ugly forest, very thin, very susceptible to archer fire. Primary gold in the forward position, but I like that there's a big juicy forest here. So just a very quick wall off this way. And that forest, uh, rather that gold should be nice and safe. Primary stone also annoyingly placed in the forward position. The entire east and south of this base is completely open. And so we'll see which direction Hera chooses to attack from. Basically, the entire attack path for both bases is completely open with the exception that our slab has a little bit of coverage here with a forest as I see a Spearman and a Scout making their way to Hera's base. Let's take a look at where the additional resources are. Look at Hera, posturing, keeping this 4 HP Scout within the range of the town center. Daring heart, I dare you, he says, to garrison your villagers and get some idle time. Extra gold off to the right side, as now a love tap from the Slavic Scout kills. Ooh, that Turkish Scout, and it looks like the Slav lost another, rather, a Spearman here. Now he loses another Spearman if we're being all grammatically technical and correct about things. But the two scouts are still alive, and now they're going to be playing loop the loop with these two Spearmen, I'm assuming. As Hart leads them on a chase as he begins exploring the nether regions of Hera's uh, base, a third scout has made his presence known here. We'll see how long he stays around. Will he get the villager before he dies? He does. She grabs her throat. Gutted, choked, killed as she is. She falls to the sand. The first civilian kill of the game. <laughs> what, the hell did that, what the hell did that scout think he was doing there for a second? Oh, the villagers take matters into their own hand. The spearmen way too slow. You are not Lithuanian, they say. And so they are taking absolute control of their own destiny. They get two kills. Who among these heroes? These civilian heroes. This guy has one kill as he chops his... This is the Cincinnati villager. She does not have a kill. He has a kill. Okay, so these two guys have the kills. And all of a sudden, the map goes quiet. Let's take a look at the bases as the players disengage. It looks like they're both starting, but not really starting to bank resources. Our Turk obviously ahead in the gold with four villagers to zero and that quicker Turkish mining. It looks like one villager was kind of hanging out, not really uh, mining anything. Interesting wall off by our Turk. Has he not seen? Okay, so he hasn't seen that there's a nice anchor forest here to the side of the map where he can easily diagonally wall this. By the way, what a easy, easy location to wall off here if you want to go all geometrical. But Hera hasn't seen these two. And so I don't know if he assumes there's nothing here or he just doesn't have any more units that he wants to send on an exploration mission here. Okay, never mind, right? As I say that, a spearman, although he might be on patrol command instead. No, so he's not exploring. These two spearmen are just patrolling. Might want to send one of them over here because you are losing access to two big forests and a relic if you don't explore this part of the map. Another scout moves in, takes a whole bunch of arrows to the back of the ass and runs away. Although, ooh, <laughs> these scouts from our slab, they're very ballsy. They keep charging into archer fire. And speaking of archer fire, we've got four archers and a Turkish spearman heading to the south of the Slavic base. Has Hera been here before? Yes, he has. He's seen the extra gold. And how does our Slav know? How does he know that there's an incursion here? He doesn't see Hera's army, but he is already patrolling. It must be the berries. My favorite lemon bushes with the pretty blue butterflies. Chasing a scout, heading over at Hera, sending two army groups over. Separate army groups. So he's going to try to take, uh, take Hart's micro into task here. Although, okay, Hart loses. Not every day you lose a skirmisher to a few archers. But now on the high ground with so many more skirmishers on the hunt. I don't know. This is not good news here for our Turk who loses a Spearman. Not that that Spearman is very useful at the moment. It looks like he is attacking with army group number two. 
to those exact berry bushes I was pointing out. Heart peels off too. Says, you know what? I don't need all seven of you chasing two archers. Honestly, I don't think he even needs all five. Oh, they keep missing though. Maybe he does need all five <laughs> if they're all going to miss. And down goes the archer, which allows us now to pivot over here. What kind of kill count do you guys have? Two kills, three kills, one of them a villager, not you. So they definitely got one of the berry pickers. So one army group dead. Second army group still around. Hera's army count, nine to eight. He's down one villager. He's ahead one total uh, army supply, army count. And now he's starting to explore. Okay, so he's seen the forest here. Oh, <laughs> relic being missed here. Both players are heading up to Castle Age. So a little bit of light petting, some light, you know, over the pants action here in Feudal Age. But I'm glad to see that both players are rushing up to the more powerful Castle Age units and the more powerful Castle Age fun battles. Although that being said, I mean, <laughs> Feudal Age, as you guys know, those of you who've been watching for a few months, I have very much a newfound appreciation for Feudal Age battle. The micro, the counter, the maneuvering is always so much fun to watch in Feudal Age. Ooh, Cowardly Lion is cowardly no more as he attacks not one but two spearmen as not one but two vultures fly overhead. Okay, so these spearmen are in the middle of nowhere here, very much abandoned to the sands of Arabia as yet another scout. This must have been the OG one that we saw a few minutes ago. I Not OG, but... The one we saw a few minutes ago who already took a bunch of arrows to the rear end. And now it is Hera's scout's turn to be a hero as he charges into these skirmishers. A little bit of a safer play since these skirmishers have minimum range. Not too sure where the archers think they're going. You do not want to chase into a counter unit. And let's see what he can get done here. We are still technically for the next 28 seconds in Feudal Age. And beyond that, we're still going to be technically in terms of armies in Feudal Age. It's not like... These Turkish units automatically, dum, 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 there we go, become light cavalry units. And now our Turk, like I said, has access to top of the line raiding units immediately. Forget the cost of the upgrades. Forget having to plop down a little bit of money, a few dollars, a few euros, whatever your local currency is. It's the time that really is the saving where you're saving is what I'm trying to say. The fact that they're automatically upgraded is a huge, huge boon to the Turks, who, by the way, need it. Their, uh, their trash units are <laughs> pretty damn trash. No pikemen, no elite skirmishers, infamously terrible, notoriously bad. As we've got our first Slavic Knight, two more are going to be out on the field very, very soon. And yet, again? Ooh, he's trying to cut him off. Oh, maybe I read too much into that. He, never mind. He's just going to send the knight to take care of business. But this is not a Frankish knight. And so his... He's going to have to roll the dice. Are you going to go north or are you going to go east? Where's Hera hiding? There, yeah, Hera reveals himself. Not quite the Waldo I thought he would be in uh, trying to hide his units. He reveals... Looks like these guys did kill the lion, but took a bit of damage from the lion. Okay, this guy's down to 45 HP. And by the way, like uh, the Teutonic Scout, this is as good as it gets for the Turks. Like I said, no pikemen, no halberdiers. I was going to say no arbalests for a second. I don't know why my mind went to arbalests, although they also don't get arbalests, the uh, the Turks. And Hera moves in, but there are already a whole bunch of Slavic farmers. Remember, they are working 15% faster, which means that food income is good enough to be able to support more and more knights. Hera's army is a little disjointed here. He's got some light cap to the south. Did he manage? He managed to snipe the monk. Is, was that uh, over here? Is that the cowl of the monk? But aside from that, his army is uh, a little iffy here. He's getting crossbows being countered by the skirmishers. And then the knights are going to absolutely wreck these light cavalry units. Okay, finally, Hera produces a counter unit of his own. A camel scimitar held high appears out of nowhere but the knight he doesn't give a shit he's chasing he thinks he can take this camel with 32 hp 39 of his own now, i'm not too sure that camel comes with a nine attack bonus against the knight and the knight agrees with me back so he says i don't care heart you're not sending me to die today i'm returning home send me a monk heal me up as a second town center goes up rather a third my mistake excuse me ma a third town center going up for our slav hera sitting on only the one 
Army Count's nigh identical Hera is housed. We've seen this more and more. And by more and more, I've seen, I think, tw once or twice in the last month. <laughs> which uh, which doesn't seem like a lot now that I put it out into the... Uh, I shout it out into the wind. But Hera getting housed is not a good thing. Not a good thing for Hera. Not a good thing for his army count. He's down 10 villagers. He is ahead army. But again, aside from the camels, this entire army is countered quite strongly by what our Slav has who is expanding strangely this way with houses. I'm not too sure what the point of that is. Does he want to secure maybe this patch of gold and the stone? Has he seen the stone? He must have seen it while he was hunting for Hera's army. And yet again, the army's disengaged, but now there's more Turkish camels. Now, I'm trying to think about if there's anything particularly special about the Turkish camel. I mean, in terms of your generic tech tree. So anything that comes out of a stable, anything that comes out of a blacksmith, I think they're about as perfect as you can get. It just doesn't come with any features. They're not, uh, you know, Gurjaras that meet out more bonus damage. They're not Hindustani that attack faster. They're not Berbers that regenerate HP. But in terms of your just basic average camel, in terms of your average upgrades, these guys, uh, I think, are pretty darn strong. They do have bloodlines. They do not have husbandry yet, so they do move at a 1.45 tiles a second. The knight also doesn't have uh, bloodlines. And the armies continue to circle. This is giving me, giving me uh, Feudal Age vibes right now. The way these armies are positioning here. Look at this, sending one scout in. He wants not only to scout, but he also wants to see if he can pick off any of these monks. He sees two of them disappearing into the gray zone there. Why are you still keeping these two spearmen over here? I'm not too sure. As the knight yet again chases around the southern end of this forest, only to return back to base. Oh, he's definitely monk hunting, I think, with this light cav. The light cav do only need two whacks of the sword to kill the monk. Unless, no, they're still just at 30 HP. And now husbandry is being gotten for our slav. No husbandry yet for our Turk. The player's making me, forcing me to zoom out. The one thing I absolutely hate to do is zoom out. As a relic gets pinched here, our slab already has one. This will bring the count up to two. Ooh, what's attacking you? The light cab. <laughs> Era with the mind games. Again, just trying to gar get uh, heart to garrison those villagers. Same time, it looks like a bit of an engagement here. A camel for a scout. A uh, skirmisher, rather. Yeah, this is definitely giving me feudal age vibes as the skirmishers are trying to shell away at these crossbows. The knights are trying to avoid the camels and get at the light cab. The light cab are trying to get at the monks, which they get. These are not Bengali monks with extra armor. These are not Aztec monks with 100 HP. And so the Slav has to retreat. Why is he retreating? I mean, the camel. Are you that outnumbered by camels? Nine knights to seven camels. Okay, that's not a great uh, engagement, especially not with the crossbows. And in the blink of an eye, the Slavic army just melts. I suspect a lot of this was the crossbows. Seven kills the camels. I say camels. I think there's only one surviving camel. He's only got one kill. But our Slavic player retreats. He's got another monk. Monk heading into the town center. He gets there right in the nick of time. And what's Hera going to do? Okay, he's sending light cap to raid to the south. Will he get these two villagers? Look at the synchronized attack out of these uh, light cavalry units. No, the villagers are too quick. They abscond into the nether recesses of the town center where they go up into this window, this room, and start firing arrows at the light cavalry. And by the way, without uh, husbandry, 1.5, the knight will catch up just barely, as we saw if Hera stops even for a brief second. That knight will catch up to that light cap, which is not something we see very often. I wonder why Hera still hasn't gotten husbandry. Maybe he doesn't realize he doesn't have husbandry. But he's continuing to mass his army right here in the very face of the Slav. Who 33 minutes into the game is down a third of the army count. But look at the villager population. Our Slav is more than 50% ahead. And with so many more farmers. He's got 36 a second ago, 38 farmers. Working 15% faster, 16 gold miners. He is at no risk of not being able to pump out these knights who should not be chasing. Okay, but there you go. Pulls, realizes, why am I chasing one unit with five? That is just not great for me. 
Another light cavalry unit dies. Another one over there will probably die. Hera is back to raiding. He's killed four total villagers this game. His light cavalry are just not getting the damage they need, though. We'll keep an eye on those. Monk conversion sniper lines going down. He gets two camels. Okay. Two camels leaving your opponent with seven is a pretty big swing. Although seven plus another tooth there, I think. Now, this is a lot of knights. Upgrades, one, two. Camels upgrades also, one, two. Crossbows, two, zero. To the skirmishers, two, two. I love that our uh, slab, by the way, is continuing to pump out skirmishers. Even against camels, skirmishers are not terrible because the camel's base armor of zero really does make it susceptible to any, any unit in this game. <laughs> you can even be a villager with that base armor of zero. Ooh, be careful though. I don't want to just throw away units. And for the first time in the game, our slab is ahead, both in terms of army and civilian population. Another cavalry unit falls. Another one leads hard on a chase. Uh, Hera is doing an amazing job just trying to distract hard. Hard is doing an amazing job not falling for it. As yet another blood and crypts battle erupts in the middle of the map, but if there's something you're noticing in the last five minutes, these battles, even though they're not really going the Slav's way, more and more are getting closer to the Turkish base. Hera's battle before was over here, then over here, now it's over here. Inch by inch, our Slav is creeping his butt up to that Turkish settlement. And again, even though Hera is taking the battles, there's just endless reinforcements. Oh, we've got our uh, Schwarzenegger carrying logs over here. He's got 800 stone. Where, oh, where will you put the castle? My guess. Oh, look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I like it when I call things right. I like it when I call things wrong, too. Who cares? I just like calling things. In case you guys haven't noticed, yours truly likes to open his big yap and talk. <gasps> oh, I was wrong at the... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was completely wrong at the end of the day. That counter castle by Hera with uh, about 10 times more villagers is going to go up first. And so Hart decides to relocate. Had that castle continued, these villagers would be sniped by Hera's castle. And yet again, the slab for the fourth or fifth time takes a not great engagement, retreats a little bit, and yet is somehow still alive. And you know what that somehow is? 40 villagers ahead. That's your somehow. Now our Turk has his castle. Janissary coming out. Okay. Uh, I wasn't going to say... That was not on my bingo card. A Janissary. Where are these knights going? He's pivoting to the left. Relic count is still two to nothing. Has Hera seen this? Still has not seen this. Ha yeah, he has seen this. Oh, just barely. I mean, our Slav with this market must have seen this. So, I kind of called it right. I mean, uh, let, let's go back to the war, you know, the narcissistic uh, discussion of yours truly. I kind of called it right. It was on this hill and then relocated. We neither of us knew that uh, Hera would react immediately with that castle. By the way, he has enough stone for another castle. Our slab is going up to Imperial. A few camels run by. You are not light cavalry units anymore. Hera only has one light cav left. Oh, but they run into a few pikemen. <laughs> well-placed recruits, and even more. Hard is just leaving these small pockets of units here. Hera, do you have... A, I don't think he's got husbandry. No, okay, he does have husbandry now. And now he's also going up. He suspects. He doesn't see any major army buildup here in uh, the staging area for the Slav, and so he suspects that his opponent is going up to Imperial, so of course he goes up to Imperial as well and plops down a very defensive castle. And all of a sudden, our Turk, who was the one pressing for a while, is now the one being pressed into. And like I said, our Slav just did such an amazing job of pushing, pushing, pushing. Like I said, every engagement... I'm going to stop saying like I said, because if you've been watching this, you know I said it. Every engagement seemed to go in favor of the Turk, just by a little bit. Like 55 to 45, or 52 to 48. And yet our Slav just continued to push by virtue of just having that bigger, more massive economy. We've got a single boyar hacking away at the corner of the castle. Oh, he's not going to survive long against so many camels. 
Oh, he'll probably take down a cow. No, never mind. He runs away. Hera targets him down. Look at that ridiculous base armor. He's chasing. What is he chasing? I'm not too sure. It looked like the crossbows for a second. Then he turned tail and ran away. Realized that there's a Janissary here. Now he takes a fight and a murder-suicide. As they both die at the exact same time. Our Turk retreats to the castle. Heals up his camels. He is 30 seconds away from Imperial. But his opponent's been in Imperial for a few seconds. He's getting the Pikeman. Uh, rather, Halberdier upgrade. He's getting the Cavalier. He's getting Chemistry. Remember, in 13 seconds... That Turk is going to have chemistry free of charge gratis. And so he'll be able to start pumping out hand cannoneers. Uh, I say hesitantly because he's okay. He does have two uh, archery ranges. I love that our slab, by the way, is on the high ground here. And so he's dealing 25% more damage to this castle, which is under siege. Hera has to pull eight villagers. The last thing you want to do when you're down 34 villagers is pull eight of your villagers to have to repair a castle. Another trap is going to pop out. Where is he going to go? On this high ground? No. Okay, I still think this is high ground. Look at that masonry for our Slav. He is at 200 population. And even though Hera is getting heavy camel riders, he is down 40 total supply. Interesting. Let's see Druzhina from our slab. Druzhina is the upgrade that gives all of their infantry trample damage. And it is some pretty good trample damage. Now, the one caveat about Druzhina, as cool as it is, it is a ridiculously expensive upgrade. I believe the second most expensive upgrade in the game. There's Detonets. That's the... Uh, it's confusing when the slab uh, upgrades are all... They all start with a D. Detonets is the upgrade that makes their castles cost 260 less stone and replaces that with wood so not quite as good as the it, how do i put this it's more of a stone saving than the frank feature of cheaper castles but on the whole in terms of total resources it still does cost 260 wood so on the whole on the whole doesn't really matter because our slab is here to the back what are you a villager look at the uh Look at the vision, by the way, for our slab. Holy shit. He sees the entire map. Hera can't reach him. He'll Because he sees him coming from a mile away. Hera's an Imperial. But our Turk without Arbalest is stuck on Castle Age crossbows. And Hussars, I just saw for our slab. So he is going to start picking away at this Turkish base, which, by the way, castles aside, is completely open. Oh, no, and Hera's expanding even more open. And by the way, our Slav sees all of it. Is it any question why he's sending his Asar this way? Hera's had enough. Desperation move, charging camels into halberdiers. I always forget. I think 28, the attack bonus against camels. 26. Pardon me. Bombard Cannon's going to try to get the Trebs, but unlike the three balls that are necessary, I think it's four... When the Trev is on the high ground, Hera sees the Hussars. He's got 50 villagers on food, but it looks like the eastern portion of his settlement is being raided. It looks like uh, our Slav has plopped down some infrastructure as well, so he is about to ramp up the pressure. He is about to crank up the heat. Hera is down 40 total supply, and now his camels. Where are his camels? Why are they not here? His Janissaries are left alone. There's six of them here. They're going to die. <laughs> what? What happened there? Where the hell are the camels? <gasps> They're dealing with a cavalier. Oh, goodness gracious. Out of 15 camels, 10 are here. Okay, so all 15 are here to the east. Oh, and he sees the infrastructure going up. Our Turk sees it. He sees the second one. And camels, if you've been watching my uh, casts for a while, or if you yourself have played the game, perhaps, with some camels. You know they absolutely suck balls at tearing down buildings. No attack bonuses, attack speed of a 2, and a base attack of a 7. Sorry, I didn't mean to get all gross there with the, uh, with the uh, expression, but they really do suck at taking down structures. And so this stable is in no risk of going down anytime soon. Hussars are being pumped out on the right. 
What are you? Why is it a random villager? Okay, what happened to the Hussar that was here? He must have gotten got by the castle who has one kill. And what an absolute fantastic pivot by our staff. Now, Hera doesn't know what we know. I mean, look at the scores. He knows. <laughs> he knows he's down significantly. But what he doesn't know that we know, that he doesn't know that we know, but we know that he doesn't know that we know, is that our slav is supply capped. His po he's population capped, for those of you who want to get all technical with the terms. So he his ability to pump out hussars is a little bit hindered at the moment. Just by virtue of his civilization being too big. Too big to fail. He's got way too many units, way too many villagers for a trash war. And he's got 15 hussars, but he can't build more because, again, he's at the 200 limit. That being said, Hera doesn't realize, like, this is completely open. <gasps> Was she going to attack the... Does she have a knife in her hand? Does she have a knife in her hand? Oh, it looked like... Yeah, look, the hilt of a knife. The villager was going to attack the monk. No, oh, that is bad karma <laughs> to attack a, a man of the cloth. But in any event, uh, all jokes aside, I think our Turk just realized he was about to get... Um, how do I put this without getting all gross? Gangbanged by the Slavic Hussars and Slavic raids while having to deal with the main push here in the front of Cavaliers, Halberdiers, do they have trample damage? Yeah, area of effect range 0 0.5 tiles. So a, he's that rich, our Slav, that he can afford. Druzhina, again, is ridiculously expensive. It's like 1,200 food, 500 gold for this upgrade. 1,700 resources. And our Slav able to afford it because he's got 53 food. 53 food. 53 villagers on food. What is Garrison inside of you? A skirmisher, okay. <laughs> What's inside of you? Two villagers. So there must have been some raiding here by Hera as well, which will have, uh, if there was, will have caught it in picture in picture. But in any event, the Janissaries are down. So six down. This Bombard Cannon is now exposed. A, another Janissary lies dead. These villagers are dead. And so Hera's army count of 26 is about to go down by seven. And by the way, seven really powerful. And his opponent is going to start raiding the hell out of him with Hussars and... Hus not just Hussars, but Trample Damage Halberdiers, which do 8 and then 26 bonus damage to these camels, which again, like I said, good as they are, are still generic. These are not Saracen camels. These are not Gurjara camels with uh, Frontier Guards that gives them that plus 4 melee armor. These are just your basic generic camels, which, by the way, are the plus 1, plus 2 forging and chain barding armor. That's where they are. So they are nowhere close to being able to handle these halberdiers, let alone anything else, anything heavier. Now, Hussars, obviously, they'll handle because they come with a plus 18 attack bonus against those Hussars. But even still, I don't know. I don't know. These Hussars are pretty upgraded to me. They look pretty upgraded to me. And in a second, I'm sure he'll start Blast Furnace to give them that plus two extra attack. And our Turk, open to the north, cracked open in the center. And open to the east, he knows he's about to get absolutely overwhelmed. And even though he still has a good amount of resources underneath under his control at the moment, this is all going to change in the next literally 60 to two, six, one to two minutes. This is all going to change. And he's just going to have to either garrison his villagers nonstop, or he's going to have to make the very difficult choice of kill, letting the villagers die as they gather resources and then replenishing them, which is going to take away the food count that he needs to train his uh, camels. And on top of that, if he wants to keep going Janissaries, they're not cheap either. 60 food for that. So Hera is just in a bad spot. He knows it. He taps out, lifts the fight another day. 79 to 79. That is pretty bonkers. And I very rarely do see such uh, symmetry. These two should definitely buy a lottery ticket right now. Peak APM for Hearth. Look at that. Almost Hera levels. 30 minutes in, 36 minutes in. So about uh, 20 minutes, 10 minutes ago. Wow, that's uh, very interesting. Economies, yeah, look at that. 19,000 bigger economy, which is about what? Just under 40% bigger economy for the slab who takes all the resources. Oh, <laughs> just a little bit less stone. But remember, they don't need as much stone because now their castles are 260 stone less 
and uh, with enough to, with with eight thousand more wood, that'll make up the two hundred and sixty uh, stone slash wood conversion relic gold. Playing a small role, I would say, fourteen hundred and sixty three uh, extra gold does work out. It's not every day the Turk doesn't out gold mine his opponent. Five conversions out of one seventy nine. Nothing to write home about. Nine buildings destroyed, and this is the just it. Look, Hera ha didn't even manage to destroy a single building the entire game. Kill count. He does have the higher kill count. What? But, not what, but, unfortunately was stuck at that four villager kill count that we saw many, many moons ago when his light cavalry began raiding here to the back. Our Slav, even though he didn't kill that many villagers, still killed more, although our Turk did kill more army. Not surprising when you've got the ranged Janissary with the six units with 22 kills and your opponents attacking with halberdiers, glorified scouts, and yeah, even cavaliers with their six pierce armor are going to have a difficult time handling this many Janissaries, and there were a lot more before these guys charged right into their faces and slew them where they stood. And with the slaying of where they stand and all of that cool stuff, our Slav, despite, like I said, in my opinion, taking the worst engagement once, twice, three times, and then the castle shenanigans here, does ultimately prevail and inch by inch by inch encroaches onto the Turkish settlement until he envelops it. Let's take a look one last time at the insane map vision of our slab. Look at this. Literally does not see 20% of the map, which means he sees 80% of the map. That is just a bonkers level amount of vision, whereas Hera sees his side and nothing else. He doesn't know what's popping out of that ether, except for the units he already sees, which is the not quite fully upgraded Hussars and Cavaliers and... Halberdiers? Does he not even see any halberdiers? No. Actually, never mind. There's a le nah, the eleven are all. Look at that. They're all here in the dark spaces. On the radar system here, and so our Turk realizes that he's been cracked open. He's not safe in either of the three quadrants of his base. Realizes it, and even these camels realize it. They're like half dead here. Yeah, their HP is down about twenty five percent. They're not going to accomplish very much. Raiding has begun to the back. Raiding has begun to the north, to the east. And our Turk, unable to handle it, taps out, lives to fight another day. And it is Hart, our Slav in red, who is victorious. But GG in a very fast, very fun game to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.